My name's Ash, Ash Hington. Me and my mate Tracker want to see the Blythe Tyne Railway open to passengers. That's right, mate. We want the Blythe Tyne Railway back online. We're back in Sandrock's campaign to bring the tr train back to South East Northumberland. First, a history lesson. Long, long ago, in a world where... Give it a rest, Ash. Sorry. In 1848, the Blythe Tyne Railway first opened. It connected the towns of Ashington, Blythe, and Bedlington with Newcastle and North Tyneside. The line was in use for passengers for a hundred years. However, it came to an end in 1964 when Dr. Beechin... <coughs> no, not her! Closed many British railway routes, including the Blythe Dine. The stations were demolished. There are some remaining buildings and platforms, but some, for example, in Blythe, have been lost completely. But the track itself stayed in use, mostly for transporting coal from the mines in southeast Northumberland. The mines are gone. But we still have a perfectly usable railway. Sandrog is leading the campaign to get the line reopened for passengers. We believe it's long overdue. We spoke to Dennis Fancet, leader of Sandrog. We're here with Dennis Fancet, leader of the Sandrog campaign. Mr. Fancet, hello. Hello. What is Sandrog and how did it come into being? Well, Sandrog is a pro rail voluntary campaign group, so we ask for better train services in southeast Northumberland and we started in about 2004. Why can't passengers travel on the Blythe Time line now? Uh, well because there isn't a passenger service at the minute on the line so if there isn't a train going there you can't get on it but trains could actually run on the line right now as far as I can see and in 2008 we chartered a train and ran it to Ashington just to prove that point. How much do you think all this would cost? Well I think it would cost around 30 million pounds um, but I have to say uh, the authorities, Network Rail and uh, the County Council are talking about a much, much higher figure. They think it's going to cost um, possibly even as much as £60 million. So we need to have a little debate because I don't think it need cost as much as that. Both of those figures sound really, really high. But actually, if you look at what it costs the Council just to improve, say, one roundabout, you're talking about four or five million pounds just to put some new lanes in a roundabout or widen the road. So another way of explaining it is that this line could be open for the cost of about ten roundabouts. Could you tell us some of the benefits of putting passenger trains back on the Blythe Time Line? Mainly it's about giving people access to trains to get to work in Newcastle. Uh, in this region not everyone owns a car and even if you do own a car there's often two people in the family who are working and there's only one car between, you, uh, between both of you. So the line is really about access to jobs and work and trying to um, improve the number of people who are employed in the area. South East Northumberland has got a very, very high rate of unemployment and we think this railway line will give access so people can get to work and therefore it will increase the prosperity of the region. Mr Fancet, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We went out onto the streets of Ashington to get a meet and take uh, uh, get the community's opinion. This passy is nice, mind. Would you like to see rail passenger services to Newcastle again, and if so, why? Yeah, I would, because then I could use the train instead of the bus. Yes, I think so. I think uh, it would be quite useful for a lot of people. Yes, I would, and uh, it would be easier for most people to Buses aren't that reliable around here, so... Do you think passenger service from here to Newcastle would be useful? Yes, it should have been, it should never ever have stopped. When I was just that size, 
I should stay on the pier and watch the trains go by. I do think so because um, it's sometimes difficult when you've got little ones getting the bus because there's not always bus chair access on the bus. Well, it would bring people in, wouldn't it? Uh, yes. Good for the economy of yeah. the town. Yeah, we definitely need enough. Our local MP Ian Lavery is a long time supporter of our cause. He came to Collingwood School to add his way to the campaign. We're here with Ian Lavery, the MP for Wandsbeck. He's back in our campaign. Hello. Hello there. How much would it cost to get passenger trains back on the track? Well, the cost in many ways is irrelevant. It's the impact it'll have on the local community and the benefits it'll have on the local community and the way in which they can use the facility to get from their part of the world, basically, into uh, in Newcastle. What would the impact be on the local area? Everything about the Ash and Blad and Tyne Line has got to be positive uh, be because of the fact that it, it's something which we had almost 50 years ago this year. It was beneficial then, it was closed down, it's caused massive problems since. So the impact can only be positive on, on the area for people either wanting to travel into this wonderful place or leave this uh, place for the likes of employment. So it's got to be positive all round. When would you like to see the railways being open to passengers? Tomorrow. <laughs> Do you agree with the idea of that reopening the passenger line will bring jobs to South East Northumberland? You'll find that you know when when companies look to invest and set up factories or whatever in South East Northumberland, they look at the transport links and. If we haven't got this link, then it, it, it's a negative point for anybody who potentially wants to invest money. Once to say that that link is there and re-established, then it, it's a real positive point. So I think it, when it's uh, reopened, then we'll see lots more businesses find in our area a lot more attractive to invest. you got a point there. If the passenger line opened again, what could we do to get people back on the train? I think what you would need to do is educate people and let them know first. By the way, I think there'll be a, um, people will be absolutely delighted in, in, in all of the communities thinking that they can basically get onto a train and get into uh, different parts of, of the northeast. So I, I think people will be terribly excited with that, but that, that would need to be an educational process, an advertising process to make sure that people are fully aware of what was on offer and how it will benefit them. Do you think we have a good chance of being successful in our campaign? Well, that, that's a, a really good question. And for the first time in 20 years, I think we're nearly there. Uh, thanks to uh, campaign groups, and, and in particular Senru, who have been outstanding in the campaign. I mean, they've left no stone unturned. They've had detailed plans drawn up. They've kept the, the fact that the Ashton and Tyne line should be reopened in, in, the, in the public domain uh, for, for but basically since it was closed down 50 years ago. San Rogue have done a brilliant job and I think with other people and all partners coming together, this is now a reality. Ian Leary, thank you. And thank you. Well, I think that settles it. Getting the Blythe Tyne back online would be a great idea. Right, Ash? Ash? Ash! <coughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, let's get the boys' time back online now. Bye! Oh, Ash, that's disgusting. Oh,